it was William Hare's turn to take his place on the stand. He was asked early in about his whereabouts on the night of the murder. He replied that he was in a pub and left from there late. After Hare received a direct question from the counsel whether he is or he is not William Burke's murderer, he exploded with anger. This is nonsense! He was my best friend! I would never do that! If his body was found in the university, then it's obvious that Dr. Knox has something to do with it. That man needs human bodies like the ocean needs water. The counsel then asked about his and the victim's relationship with Dr. Knox. Hare's answer was enough to shock all the attenders at the trial. He said, one of the lodgers that used to stay in my house died from a disease. He owed me a significant amount of rent. Burke and I decided that it would be only fair to sell his body for medical purposes so that the rent could be repaid. One of Dr. Knox's assistants recommended him to us and that's how we met and made a deal. Dr. Knox though kept being persistent about supplying him with new bodies. He would send us threatening letters blackmailing us. I'm thinking now that Knox possibly murdered Burke either because he refused to do his dirty work or because he knew that Burke was ready to turn him in. The counsel then interrupted him. But Mr. Hare, someone who looks like you, was spotted on the same night carrying a large package to the university. Do you still insist that it had not involvement in the Williams Burke's death? Hare replied. Yes, I insist that I had nothing to do with it. That's one less thing I should feel bad about. And with this tone of determination and persistence, Hare's trial came to an end. However, the intensity in the courtroom was just starting to spark.